Both Cloud and Sephiroth are probably the most iconic Final Fantasy characters in Kingdom Hearts, and they without a doubt have the most interesting story amongst the Final Fantasy characters that are in Kingdom Hearts. Cloud and Sephiroth's story actually acts as a side story to Kingdom Hearts. While it was lightly touched upon in Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2 is where things started to get interesting. From the moment we arrive in Hollow Bastion, we can already see that Cloud is determined to find his darkness, which is of course Sephiroth. You can definitely feel the tension, and the story of Cloud is more in-depth this time around in comparison to Kingdom Hearts 1, as he acted more as a character to fill a spot in Olympus Colosseum. Today I'll be explaining the story of Cloud and Sephiroth within the universe of Kingdom Hearts. Before Sora and Co make their way to the Olympus Colosseum, Cloud manages to somehow find his way into the world. Hades ends up making a deal with Cloud, and that is if Cloud successfully destroys Hercule in a battle, then Hades will guide Cloud to his darkness, who is Sephiroth. This meant that Cloud would have to fight in the Olympus Colosseum, versing strong opponents if he wanted to eventually verse Hercules. Cloud eventually finds himself up against Sora while he was busy climbing the Colosseum ladder in order to verse Hercules. The battle itself actually has two different options. You can lose to Cloud and he will come out victorious, or of course you can defeat Cloud and Sora will come out victorious. However, whichever option you choose, both outcomes will have the same effect on the story's progression. Cloud decides not to kill Sora when the battle is over. Because Cloud made this decision, it angered Hades and he ended up summoning the Cerberus. Shortly after the fight, Sora finds Cloud sitting on a step outside of the Colosseum. Cloud explained to Sora that he tried to exploit the powers of darkness, and doing so caused him to fall into darkness, desperately searching for his light. Sora reassures him that he will find the light and that Sora is searching too. Afterwards, Cloud walks off. Later on in Kingdom Hearts 1, we see Cloud finally encountering Sephiroth in the Colosseum. Cloud explains to Sephiroth that he must be destroyed in order for Cloud to wake up from the nightmare. Sephiroth offers for Cloud to join him, but Cloud refuses, and the two engage in a fight that almost instantly fades out, with us as the players not knowing the outcome. Kingdom Hearts 2 then begins, and as soon as Sora visits Hollow Bastion, he encounters Cloud. Cloud straightaway mentions that he'll get him, referring to Sephiroth, and then continues to say that this time they'll settle it. From this response, we can assume that the fight between Cloud and Sephiroth didn't turn out too good. Donald mentions that Cloud now looks different, and in response, Cloud says that it's probably because of him, once again referring to Sephiroth. The fight that occurred in Kingdom Hearts 1 seems like it failed, but perhaps something happened during that fight that changed Cloud's appearance. Aerith then appears, and from the conversation between Cloud and Aerith, it's easy to see that they have a similar relationship like they do in Final Fantasy VII. Aerith explains that if Cloud were to disappear, his light will guide him back. During Sora's second visit to Hollow Bastion, we end up encountering Tifa, who is searching for Cloud. Tifa is an important character to Cloud's story in Kingdom Hearts, as in an Ultimania interview, Tetsuya Nomura mentions that Sephiroth acts as Cloud's darkness, and Tifa acts as Cloud's light, both respectively being important to Cloud's stability. Cloud believes that he is trying to capture his darkness, but in perspective, he's actually running away from his light, who is of course Tifa. This is why Tifa is trying to find Cloud during Kingdom Hearts 2. You can look at it like Cloud is actually running away from his light. After the Battle of Hollow Bastion, we then find Sephiroth. After fighting him, we are then told to deliver a message to Cloud, and that Sephiroth is wanting to settle things. Cloud then arrives to confront Sephiroth, and the two begin to fight. During the fight, Sephiroth taunts Cloud, mentioning that he'll never let go of the darkness, and that no matter how many times Sephiroth falls, the darkness within Cloud will always call him back. Halfway through the battle, Tifa shows up and explains that Cloud doesn't have to let go of the darkness, but that he needs someone to surround him with light. Tifa then attempts to attack Sephiroth, and during this time, Cloud experiences light flashes that are blinding him. I suppose you could say that the fight between both Tifa and Sephiroth is a representation of Cloud's darkness and light fighting against each other. Cloud then stands in front of Tifa to protect her from Sephiroth. Tifa explains that Cloud can now have her light. Cloud then begins to shimmer with the light, showing that he is now embracing it. Sephiroth tries to stop this process, and then the two jump into the air and vanish. From this point forward, we don't exactly know what happened to both Cloud and Sephiroth, only that they've gone to fight a great battle. Cloud's story is a constant struggle with fighting against his own darkness and running away from his light. Although we saw Cloud embracing the light in Kingdom Hearts 2, it's clear that he needs further understanding of himself to become one. All of those lingering questions will hopefully be answered in Kingdom Hearts 3, and perhaps Cloud might finally find himself.